Apparently, we have cases of malaria in Florida and Texas. Oddly enough, this isn't a new problem. It's happened in 2003, 1970, the late 40s, and all the way back to 1870. This is a map of malarial diseases before the United States eradicated this. Yes, you heard right. There was a coordinated plan to eliminate malaria from the U.S. Now, how did we do that? Well, it was actually through a weird combination of drainage ditches, chemicals like DDT that kill mosquitoes, and the amazing power of screens. Yes, screens, like window screens. To understand how that works, we have to talk about how the plasmodium, that's the parasite that causes malarial disease, actually works. So it lives as a parasite in a female mosquito and transmits itself to humans when it bites you. This here is the mosquito biting you and these little things called sporozoites entering your bloodstream and then they head over to your liver. Once they arrive at your liver, they check into a room and by that I mean they invade your hepatocytes. While they're in your liver, they're lying dormant. And by dormant, I mean they're having an asexual orgy and reproducing massively. But they're not causing disease yet. Right here is where the fun begins. The merozoites enter your bloodstream and begin infecting your erythrocytes, your red blood cells. And this is what that looks like. This is the plasmodium getting ready to inject itself into the red blood cells so it can go in there and wreck up the place. Once they're inside of your red blood cells, one of two things happens, and I'm gonna simplify this whole cycle. Basically, they produce more merozoites asexually, or they differentiate into gametes. If you're unfamiliar with gametes, it's just a male and female reproductive cell, like a sperm and an egg. Those gametes basically wait around for an uninfected mosquito to stop by and have a sip of the human drink box that's you. They then enter the mosquito, do some sexual reproduction this time, and start the whole process over again. But wait, how is this causing a disease? I mean, this obviously looks like a disease process, but what's actually going on and what are the symptoms? If you're on this side of the plasmodium's life cycle and you live in a wealthy country with good medical care, your symptoms end here. You go in, you get treatment, and all you ever experience is fever and chills. On the flip side, if you live in a poor country where the medicines aren't available and medical care isn't exactly top notch, then you get the invasion and shredding of all of your red blood cells, which can lead to anemia, organ failure, and eventually death. Now that you understand how the life cycle works, we can come full circle back to the eradication program because it turns out all you have to do is keep humans away from mosquitoes or mosquitoes away from humans. And then that malaria parasite has nowhere to reproduce and eventually it dies out from the environment entirely. As these new cases indicate, all you need is one human reservoir and suddenly you have a population of mosquitoes that are now carrying the plasmodium again. What we need to be done with malaria once and for all is a global coordinated effort to stop the life cycle once and for all, but that's gonna take a huge amount of money. However, I have an idea for that.